Hello, Fight Fans. See Adam Mike MMA with friends here, and I'm here with my good friend and fellow YouTuber Wyatt Matheson. And uh, we decided to do this video. Wyatt uh, actually came up with the idea to do the video when we were talking about this interesting match between these two just colossally skilled uh, fighters, Ben Askren and uh, is it Logan Paul or Jake Paul? It's Jake Paul. Jake Paul. Okay, that's 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 what I thought. Okay, I, I I get them mixed up. I didn't even know who they were before the boxing thing. Me neither, honestly. And I don't even know if it would make that much of a difference if we substituted one brother for the other. So who really cares? Unless they could fight each other, and that that could be a first. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's a mere match. But but kind of it. Go through the idea of why you thought this was so interesting to do a video on this. What's your opinion on uh, Mr. Ben Askren's striking skills? For sure. Um, so <laughs> when I first heard that this was going to actually happen, um, well, actually, why don't we go before that? So when I first heard Jake Paul is trying to fight an MMA fighter, I thought that was somewhat intriguing. And the reason for that is basically – I'm fairly into sports betting. Um, Mike would be too if it was legal where he lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I thought that they were going to mess up the betting line for this, regardless of who he was fighting. If he was fighting Conor McGregor, obviously that's super unlikely. If he was fighting Michael Bisbing, that's honestly equally as unlikely for the reason that how can you sanction a guy who has two knee replacements and one eye? <laughs> yeah. so that was pretty <laughs> unlikely to happen. Um, but then they came across uh, Ben Askren, and obviously that's a very smart move by the Jake Paul team because Ben Askren can't strike. He's, uh, he's very good as an overall mixed martial artist. He knows his game, take people down. His top game is very, very good. His top control is very good. But when do we actually see him striking? Because if you watch him against Damian Maya, a dude who's not known for striking, a dude who's, what, 41 years old or something like that, when they fought each other? Yeah. Ben couldn't keep up. Ben was getting demolished on the feet and looked horrific doing it. Spinning at some times, looking like a ballerina. It was uh, it was ugly. Um, so, yeah, this was intriguing to me because when the betting line officially came out, they had Jake Paul as minus 150. And I'm going to be completely honest. I see this fight as more like minus 800, which people are going to be like, what the hell are you talking about? That's absolutely absurd. And I get that because you're looking at it as a world champion MMA fighter, an Olympian fighting a YouTuber. But there's way more to it than that because Jake Paul's been training for three years, two years with the same coach. Um, he trained with Sugar Shane Mosley. He's improved a lot. He's had three opponents that I've seen. And uh, the first fight was against a guy named Deji, who you, some of you might know as KSI's little brother. And he looked horrible. They both looked terrible. And he basically just won because he was bigger than the other guy. And if you look at from that to his second fight versus a guy I'm not even familiar with, something Gib, um, he improved a lot. And he's improved also um, when he fought Nate Robinson. Now, granted, competition level, horrible. But you can see the improvement. And when have we seen uh, Ben Askren box? We haven't. And what have we seen from Ben Askren striking? Well, nothing good. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think there's crazy value on betting on Jake Paul. And I think people are underestimating him tenfold, basically. Well, you got in in a really good time because I don't know if you've seen the odds move, but I'm pretty sure at one side I seen he was a minus 265 favorite now. So I think a lot of people were starting to think, the same thing as you and you called me out online because when I first seen him, I was like, what is this Jake Paul's like a two to one favorite, uh, I, you know, against uh, Ben Askren. And you're like, well, what do you think the odds should be, Mike? And then, of course, I thought, but I thought that Nate Robinson jackass was going to be Paul. So apparently I, 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 I severely underestimated Paul and I need to, uh, I, I maybe had my emotions a little bit on that from, you know, him being just kind of like a goofball on YouTube to he's a young athletic guy with some skill. Yeah. And I should clarify, I don't like Jake Paul at all. Like, like Mike, I just kind of discovered him when he started the YouTube boxing thing. But from 
watching a couple of his videos, not the whole thing. I couldn't tolerate a whole video. Um, <laughs> he's an annoying bastard, man. Hey. I, do, I do not like that <laughs> dude at all. His brother is like somewhat likable, but Jake Paul is just like, oh my God. But like, if you take the bias out of it, of course I want Ben Askren to win. But yo, can we pick somebody from the MMA community that isn't the worst? Yeah. Like this guy in a kickboxing match, could he <laughs> even beat like Joanna Janjacek? I don't know. Oh no, 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 not at all. Absolutely, absolutely not. I would take I would take Joanna all day. <laughs> so what are we doing here? Get somebody who knows what they're doing, because otherwise, like this is this is a joke. To me, it's a joke. But but maybe a smart step for Paul, because now he can say, hey, you know, I fought somebody who's an MMA fighter. And you know if he wins, he's going to be talking so much shit. Boxing's better than MMA. I killed this professional MMA fighter of so many fights. and It's exactly what these guys want. Yeah. But so the thing, if you look at it, there's not really an advantage that Ben Askren has. If you look at it, who's more technical? Well, this isn't a fight. I hear lots of people talking about, hey, this is a fight. Chael Sonnen, Mike Swick, it's a fight. He's going to drown him. We'll get to that later. But it's like, it's not a fight. It's not a fight in what they're talking about. This isn't a, okay, let's use all the skills we have in a street fight, an MMA fight. It's a boxing match. It's not a fight. So all these, oh, well, he's going to be able to clinch him. They're going to break that up, and they're going to break that up often. Because this is all done by Jake Paul, right? The whole event's put together by him through Thriller or Triller or whatever it's called. So they're going to make it, they're going to do everything they can to make him win, basically. Just like Floyd versus McGregor. I think they're going to have a ref that's going to break them very frequently. They might even start taking points away for clinching way too much or clinching from behind or whatever he ends up doing. And I could honestly see this going that. Ben's getting clipped over and over and over again. He forgets where he is. He shoots a panic takedown just like he did against Masvidal. He will. He will. Yeah. Uh, I think instincts are going to kick in, and I think he'll accidentally shoot for a takedown. Which will be like, he's basically the human meme light reel at this point. Because, I mean, (laughs) we got the Jorge KO. Now he's going to be shooting for takedowns. After he finishes shooting for six takedowns like a retard, he's probably going to get knocked (laughs) out. Like, it's just a bad look for him. And on top of that, I actually think if you look at some of his interviews, I think he actually thinks he's going to win, which is quite surprising to me because I originally thought it's a money grab. He looks like he thinks he's going to win. Oh, I, I think when when you're that kind of a competitor that Ben Askren is, I think he probably thought he had a good chance against Jordan Burroughs too when he took him on in that exhibition wrestling match. That's that was way. just that was just a, a lot of things with Ben just being too old, no card loads left in the knees, and besides the fact Jordan Burroughs being an absolute monster. Because if we, but if we put Ben Askren in his prime, whenever his absolute prime in terms of wrestling was, he wouldn't have beaten Jordan Burroughs. No, I, no, I, not in a wrestling match. I don't think. No way. No, Ben Askren was just. It was one of those weird, he's one of those weird fighters to watch. You'd be like, that was interesting. I wonder if he can win again. And then he started beating everybody. Yeah. So I would have definitely taken the bet at minus 150 like you did. Great, Mm -hmm. great timing on that. And people are starting to see it. I don't know how much I would put on it at minus 265. I definitely wouldn't be willing to lose, willing to put more than $500 on this. So that means I give Askren some chance. Well, yeah, there's always a chance, of course. Um, And, like, you'd be silly to say that he has no chance because of that fighting experience, because he's a former champion, multiple organizations, he's an Olympian. But that chance is so small. Like, I I don't think people understand how small that chance is. So, yeah, minus 265, like, yeah, it's getting up there. I honestly think... We're going to see a lot of casual people start betting when we get closer to the fight. I'm not talking like two days before, but like the week leading up. And I think we'll see the odds come back down to like at least minus 230 kind of thing. I think there's still a lot of value with that. And then I think last second, as most whales and sharks and stuff do, right before the fight, I think he's going to freaking skyrocket to like minus 450. Because it's like, oh yeah, we know what's going to happen. Here's all the money. And then everybody's like, oh no. They know what they're talking about. 
we bet on the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the real people, the the real money, the guys that really actually make money at Vegas exactly. will come in with their money. Uh, I'm going to play that little clip you were talking about from Chell Sonnen. And um, I think I maybe took it a little bit more seriously than you did. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll play that for everybody and then uh, talk about that. Sounds good. Matt Lillman would come right into that same vein. You'd watch go, man, does this guy know anything about boxing? Okay. So I should say he's talking about Matt Lindland right now coming in. Matt Lindland was a horrible boxer, didn't know boxing at all, but he was a wrestler and MMA guy. Uh, me and Wyatt listened to this whole thing earlier. I won't disagree with you based on what you saw, but I will share with you things that I saw that there was no cameras around, such as Matt at a boxing gym in Oregon called Grand Avenue. The top boxing gym in the Northwest, professional boxers there, and Matt going in and sparring with them. Matt did not know how to box. He did not know how to slip. He didn't know it was a couple jabs and dig to the body, then come back upstairs. He didn't know how to turn his shoulder over. He didn't know all of these things about boxing, even the basics. Matt did not know them. But Matt would go in and spar with top 25 guys. Remember a guy, Joe, specifically ranked number 25, heavyweight boxer, 210 pounds, lighter heavyweight, very good, excellent for our area. And Matt would just go in there and swarm him. And it would just be nonstop punches, walking him down, pushing him into the ropes, pulling his neck every chance he got, come back, and all of a sudden Joe can't stand. Joe's the number 25 ranked heavyweight boxer in the world. Matt Little is a 167-pound Greco-Roman wrestler, and Matt broke him. It took a Okay. Now, you think maybe Chael's exaggerating a little bit. He definitely has in the past, and he definitely could be, but I think there definitely could be some points there. I, I don't know if you're familiar with a heavyweight fighter named John Ruiz. I'm not, no. So this is the guy that Roy Jones beat for his heavyweight championship, but a uh, guy that went to a draw with Evander Holyfield. Uh, he was like a three-time heavyweight champion. And, I mean, obviously a better striker than Ben Askren. I mean, who isn't? But he had such a shitty style. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. I mean, he would hold, he would hit. And I have seen several fighters. Um, I can't think of the name of the guy, but there was this guy that used to give winky Wright fits and winky Wright was like you know a top bound for pound ever and this guy was like i mean he was like 34 and 15 i think his last name might have been solomon and but he would just come in with just it was almost like he didn't know how to box and that confused winky Wright because he was in there to box right I think it is going to be important who the referee is in this and how much holding and things that they let them do. Yeah, I agree. Do you know, is this uh, is this an exhibition bout? I haven't been able to see anywhere. Is it an exhibition bout or does this actually count on their records? It's de It's got to be a professional bout, I would think. I well, think if it's it a... Because Jake's first fight was an amateur fight with headgear and all that. But his yeah. last two fights have both been professional fights, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, yeah, because I think he was 1-0 and going into the Nate fight. So, yeah, this will almost definitely be a uh, professional fight. So, you are going to have a professional referee in there. And you're going to have uh, the commission. They're going to have to do certain things. You know, even if... Uh, you know, a lot of the people there are favorable towards Jake Paul and their promotion trailer, which I'm surprised it made it to a second event, probably only because of Mike Tyson. Yeah. I'm, but, uh, <clears throat> I mean, if he can just continually hold Paul and hold him down, and you know, you know Ben Askren, he is going to be jawing with him the entire time. I mean, he's not going to shut up for a second. I, I think that, I mean, I don't know if he's going to beat him, but I think he's definitely going to frustrate Paul. I think Paul's going to get tired. I think he has chances of making him swing wild shots. And, I mean, I don't know if Ben Askren is, I, I know he's not as good as he used to be as far as dodging shots. But, I mean, he dodged a lot of good shots from guys like, you know, that he beat like Douglas Lima. Um, 
you know, the Robbie Lawler fight, that was a strange win. I thought he probably should have ended up losing that one. I that think, wasn't a win. <laughs> yeah, I think Herb Dean kind of screwed that one up. But uh, but nonetheless, he was in there with a super powerful guy. Mm-hmm. And and he did take some punches. So, I, you know, I, I would not count him out. But what are we what are we doing in combat sports that you know we're talking about a, a YouTube star facing a guy that can't strike and then on the undercard we have 42 year old or 43 year old Frank Mir former MMA fighter making his boxing debut against Antonio Tarver Yeah I mean that's just unbelievable cuz I mean we talked about this before but Frank Mir is old, guys. Frank Mir made his MMA professional debut mere months after 9-11. Do you remember how long ago that was? That was a long time ago. And he's fighting a guy who's a decade older than him, a guy who fought Rocky Balboa. Like, what are we talking about? Rocky's how old now? Like, 75? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Anyway, so that just shows kind of what trailers after. They're after legends. Mike Tyson talked about that. Um, but I don't know. Like, that's that's not going to be a pretty fight to watch. That's going to be a mess. That's going to be a grandfather, maybe a great-grandfather yeah. versus Frank Mir. Like, I don't know. That's that a, that yeah. one I, I think will be an exhibition bout because I don't really see how you sanction that. Oh, I think they'll figure it out. Well, because I they couldn't – the reason I say that is you had, you know, two guys that were obviously very experienced and a uh, 51-year-old Roy Jones and a 54-year-old Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. And they did not want to sanction that at all. True. Yeah, no, you're <laughs> right. I think it depends on the fighters, to be honest. I think if they want it to be a pro fight, I think they will get sanctioned. But I don't – because, I mean, if we – go back to the uh, Tyson versus Roy fight, it certainly seemed to me like they didn't really want to hurt each other. There's nobody really going after it. Whereas with Frank Mir, like, everybody loves to beat up Frank Mir. Frank Mir <laughs> breaks everybody's arm, man. He's annoying. Get rid of him. He's gotten so many accommodating jobs for different uh, little MMA organizations, too. True. <laughs> Yeah, he, sure. he he does well with that. But, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it would be interesting whether they do an exhibition or whether they do a professional. One thing I will say about Tarver compared to Jones is, of course, Antonio Tarver, I mean, his claim to fame is knocking out Roy Jones Jr. in the second round emphatically. He, even though he's the same age as Roy, or maybe I think he's maybe six months older, he didn't start boxing until 10 years after Roy. He doesn't have near as much, uh, you know, near as much time in the ring and sparring and all those things. So I think you have a little bit more of like a uh, Randy Couture situation where Couture, I don't think he started. He didn't start professionally until he was either 36 or 37. But and, he's not on all those Mexican supplements that Couture was on. So that's a problem. <laughs> oh, are you... Man, I don't hundred percent. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that guy. I don't think well, he ever failed the drug test. Lifting people, throwing them, and got an eight pack. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh man, why? Why at Matheson calling out Randy Couture? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm not fighting Randy Couture. He could still be on the supplements, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, if I wasn't fighting and I was like fifty years old and I was competing with all those young guys all the time, hell yeah, it juiced me up. Exactly. I mean, trying to make it safe, but uh, yeah, give me that TRT, give me that Joe Rogan shit. Yeah, you know? I'm really with you though. I think that Tarver would beat Roy Jones if they fought again. Oh, absolutely. Um, I wasn't aware that he started that late. I don't like. I don't know Tarver's history. To be honest, like obviously I know about some of the bigger fights. Like yeah, he said. I, th- I believe he was an Olympic silver medalist. Right. He was yeah, actually he fighting at the yeah because right. it was in like the late nineties, I believe. So I want to say ninety six. I think he was in the ninety. I think he might have been in the ninety six Olympics. I think so as well. And uh, Roy was in the eighty eight. But Tarver, he like he started later, as you said. Yeah. He ended way earlier. <laughs> yeah. And he just has yeah way less miles. And if you look at Roy, like, the dude could barely move. 
Do you remember that video of Roy trying to run up a hill? He's like, oh, I'm going to kick my training up a notch, and it just looks like this injured moose. Just like yeah, that. that was sad. I mean, it wasn't quite, you know, like Chuck Liddell, but uh, it, it wasn't well, good. Arguably worse. Like, in the fight, he looked better than Chuck Liddell, but in terms of, like, his ability to actually be a mobile human being, it's not there. That guy's, like, almost wheelchair-bound. Yeah, I didn't realize he had so many joint issues and things until they started showing those uh videos and stuff but and then i was like yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's that's sad his shoulders are a mess too like he was talking about that so i just think tarver is going to be a lot healthier going into it and i think that would be a big difference maker but at the same time he's fighting frank Mir. frank Mir's a lot bigger than him. like height isn't going to be that different but frank Mir, he's probably got a paunch on him now too he's probably what 280 <laughs> Probably, yeah, and there's no weight limit in boxing. He can come in at 320, and I don't think anybody cares. Okay, so we'll say <laughs> a healthy Frank Mir is what, like 250 if he's in great shape? Yeah. And then a healthy Antonio Tarver in great shape is what, 175, 180? Yeah, 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 he fought Roy at 175. That was his best weight. So we'll say like 185 max kind of thing. Like yeah. there's a huge weight difference. Yeah, he's well, if, it's, if it is sanctioned, legally he'll have to come in at least – at 200 pounds, which is what Roy Jones did against John Ruiz. You know, mm -hmm. he barely broke 200, and I think he said he had rolls of quarters in his pockets when he did it. But <laughs> Who do you think is going to win that fight? Oh, I, I, Antonio Tarver, abs yeah. absolutely no doubt. Yeah, you, you can't make up that kind of time and muscle memory and stuff in, in that short amount of time. Even though Frank Mir in MMA, you know, he was a pretty decent striker. I mean, he was known for his submissions, but he got better at striking. Not not on that level, and he looked so horrible in his last fights. But at least he was active. I think that's part of it, right? Because he was active, whereas Tarver hasn't fought since, what, 2007? 2007 is a long time yeah. ago. Yeah, and I, I wonder when Tarver started training for this, when he started getting into camp and stuff. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, they're signing so many different guys and stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm just waiting by my phone for them to call me or you. It's, uh, that'd be, that'd be it, nice. You might it, need a few it, more subscribers. It, might, but. It's getting to that point. I would definitely fight Ben Askren. Just putting that out there right now. You think you'd win? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'll have a better idea after the Jake Paul fight, I guess. But so this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because there's no way, well, you might surprise me here, but I don't think there's any way you're going to say that you go in there in a boxing match and beat Jake Paul right now. Very true. <laughs> but Ben Askren, it's like, you know, there's a there's a chance, right? So that, that yeah. kind of says all you need to hear. And then I just want to mention this quickly. This was from that same Chael Sonnen video that you were talking about. I think it's earlier on because I didn't watch the whole thing. But direct quote, he said, people are saying that Paul has better hands than Ben. What you are, what are you basing that on? You're wrong, but I can't stop you from having an opinion. So he thinks that Ben Askren has better hands than Jake Paul. And I want you to try to validate that because that makes no sense to me at all. I, I think maybe that was a different video because I don't remember hearing that part. No, it was the same one. It's the start of that video. It was the start of that video? I don't know why yeah. I didn't remember that. Oh, not no, I totally disagree with that. Ben Askren has, uh, unless he's been hiding this boxing his whole life and he just like goes underground and is training with all these, been training with all these champions and, uh, you know, been planning this to fool us all for decades. No. Yeah, no, no he, mean, does, he doesn't have good hands. No, I Jake Paul's got better hands. That that was going to happen with the Nate Robinson fight. <laughs> He talked about he'd been training since he was younger on and off with boxing. And we saw some of the videos, and I thought maybe he was sandbagging. Maybe he's way better than he was showing. And yeah. then he got in there and it's like, oh, maybe the opposite. Maybe he's just way worse than he was showing. <laughs> yeah, he, like, started running. Yeah, one of the first things that started to, you know, be a red flag for me and Nate Robinson thing was he seemed really, really worried about his walkout attire. Like, way more than his boxing skills. So that was a bit of a red flag. Because yeah, I, 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 I seen a little preview thing. I can't remember who did it. But it was like a 15-minute preview thing. And I was hoping to see, you know, a little more of Nate. 
And mm-hmm. he basically talked a lot of the time about coordinating his clothes for his walkout. And like his, oh yeah, and like his, like his shoes to his robe oh, and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you can look good getting knocked out. <laughs> he did. He looked very good. He he became yeah. very popular after it too. He looked so damn good that his face <laughs> was all over the internet. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and yeah, I would fight Nate Robinson too. So. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just taking chances all over. Joe Rogan did say, you know, he he thinks Paul could be okay. Both the Paul brothers, even without the YouTube thing. He's like, I think eventually maybe they could make it as boxers. But a good point he made came that he brought up is he goes, I don't know that Ben Askren beats Nate Robinson. Yeah, <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on two horrible you know, the aspect of two horrible uh, boxers fighting against each other. But, mm-hmm. uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think because that was with our great friend, Brendan Schwab, right? <laughs> so there are obviously completely different spectrums with this. I mean, Brendan is like, oh, well, he's an Olympian. He's got all this stuff. It's like, okay, CTE kicking in, get this guy out of here. Um, but I was kind of surprised with Joe with that, but I kind of see his point. I'm not going to lie because like you said a long time ago, leading up to the Nate Robinson versus Jake Paul fight, it's a superior athlete, right? It's a guy who's faster. And if he's able to train smart, clearly didn't, but if he was, he was sparring and doing things properly, he could have had a pretty good shot. Um, Ben Askren, how I kind of see the fight with Ben Askren and Jake going is he's going to be defensively sound, so he might survive. He might go the distance. I can see that. I don't think that's yeah. going to happen, but I think it's possible. Um, but he's just going to be a human punching bag. He's going to try to grab him. I think in one of his attempts to clinch, he could just get popped in the face, and that could be the end of it. Um, but he's going to clinch over and over and over again. They're going to break it up over and over and over again. He's yeah. probably going to lose points as a result, and it's just going to be either a horrible fight where nothing happens and Jake wins a decision, or he's going to get knocked out. So, yeah, you're going to see know. a lot of, I think, yeah, you're going to see a lot of Ben pulling Jake's head down in a headlock, holding and hitting, and uh, a lot of behind the head shots probably. And yeah, that's why I said the referee is definitely going to be important. Yeah. They, they are not real liberal on taking points away in boxing, even less so than in MMA. True which is interesting because they have so many damn rounds. But, I mean, I've been watching boxing my entire life, and I still don't know that I've seen a fighter lose a point for holding. And if John Ruiz lost the point for holding, there might have been one. But it's it's certainly not, uh, it's not common. So, but here's the thing, because this is kind of boxing, but it's kind of YouTube boxing. And with YouTube boxing, the... uh, second Logan Paul versus KSI fight, they took two points away, right? So it does happen. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I, I did not watch that fight. So he, uh, Logan knocked KSI down, and it was, he hit him once and he was wobbly, and then he grabbed him behind the head and hit him. And then okay. dropped him, and then they took two points for grabbing him around the head. So it like, canceled out the knockdown. Oh, two points? Two points. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. And he lost the fight as a result. (laughs) Do you know that's how many points they took away from Mike Tyson for biting Evander Holyfield's ear the first time? Yeah, that should have just been one point. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They were going to let the fight go on. Mills Lane was like, you know, he was upset. Two points. Two points. And that was like, I mean, like, he's just laying the hammer down. (laughs) You know. To be fair, how many times did Holyfield headbutt him before then? Oh, yeah, I I could go into that for a long time. I don't, uh, yeah, in a way, I honestly don't really blame Mike for biting him. But the first time, the second time was out there, but. But it was absurd, because, I mean, how many guys' noses have been broken from Holyfield's freaking forehead? Have you seen, have you seen the picture with Haseem Rahman? I don't think so. Anybody watching this or watch it afterwards and look up a Haseem Rahman versus Evander Holyfield. It is, it's by far the worst one I've ever seen. It looks like a cartoon. You would think it was Photoshopped. 
it, it looks like somebody, I mean, just got a hit in the side of, in the eye socket with the sledgehammer. Yeah. It's, it's so bad. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I could, I could get off on a tangent about that there for, for a while. But yeah. uh, we'll with all these freak that. fights, we might, I think we probably will see Holyfield Tyson three though. Oh my God. That'll be worse than freaking Tito Chuck three. Yeah, sponsored by Insure and <laughs> AR AARP. Yeah, get your diapers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think we're both on the same page. At least we're both taking Paul. We both think Tarvel will win, and mm -hmm. we both think probably neither one of the fights will be too entertaining. But we'll we'll watch them anyways. <laughs> well, before we go. Just out of curiosity, because I did ask you this before, and you had a very different opinion before. What would you line the Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight in terms of betting odds? Yeah, now that I've seen Ben hit and stuff, I mean, I I think a minus four hundred's probably probably pretty good, and I think it might get close to that. Last time I seen it was minus two sixty five. Yep. Yeah. I mean that that's a huge swing from minus 150. That that takes a lot of money coming in to swing that much. Definitely. Yeah, I'm kind of like as I said when I first saw it, it's like all right, minus 800. Of course, you get swayed by the media a little bit. So I have been I'd probably line it at like minus 725. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dead serious. So. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me for this uh Wyatt, that was fun. Guys, hope you enjoyed that. Leave your comments down below on what you think of that whole event, whether you guys like it or not. We're going to do that one. We're going to do a fight companion on I think it's going to be fun, even if we're making fun of those guys. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, and thanks again for watching. As always, I love you. I respect you. And I'll see your fine asses later. <laughs>